are grateful. We, we are grateful, O Lord, for all you have done for us. Oh, we are grateful. We are grateful, O Lord. I am grateful, Lord. I am grateful. grateful for what God has done. This is Easter Saturday, the day between the Good Friday and the Resurrection morning. We are so glad to come to you through your screen this very afternoon. We also want to thank God that you are there. May the Lord bless you Amen. as you listen in the name of Jesus. Amen. With me this afternoon, are women of God. Of course, you know this is a time for women. Um, when Jesus was crucified, the men went into hiding. It is the women that came out for Jesus. They were the one that could go to the tomb, you know, with the intention of anointing Jesus. And you also know that they did that very early in the morning on Sunday. Which means they must have done one or two things on Saturday in terms of preparation for that movement. I'm so glad to have again today, to have in this um, episode, my far left, Pastor Mrs. Rosaline Ekato, one of our very hardworking pastors, uh, associate pastors at the Mother Church. Mommy, God Praise bless you. Lord. Hallelujah. We have here also. Pastor Mrs. Omo Foreman, our head of parish in Uwelu Parish, a woman of God doing wonderful things. Can we hear your voice? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we have here Reverend Mrs. N. Lawrence, our head of parish at Igosa, a very senior minister in the mission. We're glad to have you here. You are blessed as you listen in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, before we move on, Mama Lawrence is going to be praying for us. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for yes, a moment Lord. like this. Thank you because your word is ever fresh and new. Mm. We are gathered in your name, O oh Lord, to reach your children out there. Baba, may you reach them in your infinite mercy in the name of Jesus. Amen. May this word that we will hear this afternoon renew their life and their relationship with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my Lord and my maker, because this word will go far beyond this region to heal as many that are sick that will listen to transform life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Bless you, our Holy Father. Amen. Thank you for bringing us. Thank you for being part of yes. this very wonderful world. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, quickly, as you know, it's always brief. We are looking at this issue. Help us in time of distress. That's the topic we're going to be treating Help us in time of distress. Yes, we'll be looking at Jesus. Taking Jesus' death, the situation he went through before and at the cross, after death on the cross and burial, we'll be using that case as our case study. Now, there are situations in life where a man needs help us. There are situations. Sometimes a man before then was very comfortable. It's like he need nothing. But the time came. That the man was in trouble and he needed somebody to help. In this episode, there is a prophetic word for you. Help us will locate you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we have a very good account of what help us can do. In the book of Exodus chapter 2 verse 17, when the Bible says that the daughters of Jethro went to fetch water, when they got there, there were these shepherds that drove them away. 
and the doctors of uh, Jethro, they ran because these men are stronger. But there was a young man by the name Moses that came to help them. He drove away the shepherd and, and also helped them to fetch the water. The Bible says their father was shocked when the daughters returned early. He said, why did you come back so early today? They said an Egyptian helped us. Because Moses was dressed like an Egyptian. Again, that is why you should dress well. Because your dress, your, your dress pattern we always give you out. We give you a description without your knowing. They said an Egyptian helped us. And he said, and you left him, they go and bring him. You know the story, that's how just, um, and Moses found himself in the house of Jethro. He got his wife there and everything went on. Before God, you know, appeared to him in the burning bush and gave him the assignment to go back to Egypt and rescue his children. So what are we saying? Those ladies that day, because of the help they got, their journey of going to fetch water was made quicker. Sometimes people spend longer time because of lack of helpers. And I pray that whatever situation you are going through and you need a helper, one will locate you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't look down on people because of their present circumstance or predicament. You never can tell who you will need to help you tomorrow. Exactly. You never can tell. The rich man in his lifetime never knew that the time will come he will be begging for a drop of water through the finger of Lazarus. He never knew. Don't look down on people. People that are down today may be up tomorrow. There are some people who are up today, they will also be down tomorrow. I pray you will never go down in life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So there are people who are, who you see, you say this one doesn't need anything. Sometimes when you go close, you know that they need help. Yes. You say, oh, this man is too rich, look at his car, look at his house, look at his address. Forget that. When you go close, some of them are in sickness, some of them are in pain, some of them are in dire need of a helper. And I pray that God will use you as a helper to someone else. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Show me a successful man. I will show you someone who has been helped. If you see anybody who has been successful, really successful in life, someone helped him. Look around you. You will see who helped you. At one point or the other in life, you will see who helped you. And if you did not see anybody as a helper to you, see God. See God, because that is what Nebuchadnezzar, you know, was ignorant of and he suffered for it. He saw the greatness of Babylon and he, and he felt, I did all this by myself. And God said, You? He said, Is this not great Babylon I have built with my own hand? And God said, What? You built Babylon? I gave you strength. Deuteronomy said, I am the God that giveth thee power to make what? Whatever you think you possess is my dear. It was not through your strength. It was not through your power. God gave you grace. God made it available for you. You are enjoying more than others because God made it so. Exactly. Don't ever be carried away with, your, with the level of success you've achieved. God is the one helping you. Some people will say, I don't pray. I don't go to church. Yet things are going on for me. Sir, someone is praying for you. You may not know. There are some, there are some men, they don't know that for their sake, their wives are their wives are always on their knees mm -hmm. praying for them but they brag around they say they don't go to church yet things are going on fine good for you but no someone is praying for you someone is helping you on our knee and that's why things are going on fine so if you don't see anybody around you as a helper sir see god because god is the one helping it is well with you in the name of jesus amen okay now if you can't see any physical man you'll be able to see a spirit being and that's God. See, the Bible says God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And the spirit rules over the physical. We have seen people who were sick and something drastic happened. Right there while they were on the sick bed, they saw the move of God enter the room. And before they knew what was happening, sickness was gone. Only for the doctor to come in and say, what happened? What happened to you? He said, I don't know what I'm here, but see the revelation I saw. We serve the God that is a spirit. You don't see God. But his presence is always with you. His presence is always with you. Well, so that we don't digress. At some point in the travail of Jesus, in the process of paying the price for you and me, at some point in that terrible journey, Jesus needed help. Amen? Now, let's hear about this man called Simon the Serene. Jesus was arrested on Thursday evening. 
He was grilled by the chief priests and all that throughout the Friday night. And that Thursday evening, Thursday night, thank you. And then on Friday morning, he was led to Pilate. Of course, you know the story. I've dealt with that in, in uh, recent, uh, you know, life messages. Okay, after all the maltreatment they gave to him, he was made to carry a heavy cross. The soldiers themselves could see that this man is weak. The soldiers themselves could, you know, they could check the distance between where they were and God got her, where they were going, where Jesus was to take the cross to. And they could assess that this man can't take this cross to that place. Look at what the Bible says in Matthew 27, verse 32. And as they came out, they found a man of Syrene, Simon by name. Him they compare to bear the cross. They, it, it, it wasn't the man's intention. The soldiers compelled him. Listen, some helpers are compelled to help. And I pray for you, any helper that has not assigned to help you, that is food dragging, that is not willing, shall be compelled. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So it was this man that helped Jesus to carry the cross. He lifted the cross. It wasn't easy for him. He carried the cross while Jesus staggered behind until they got to Gogota. The man finally took the cross there. But it was with that same cross, our Lord Jesus was crucified. Now, he has been manhandled. He has been insulted. The crown of tongues has been forced on his head. And he has lost blood. Jesus started losing blood right from, you know, from the place where he was judged. Because the, the soldiers dealt with him and treated him, mad him. But the soldiers still nailed him to the cross. Because of you and me. I pray again, may the death of Christ not be in vain in your life. Amen. Amen. May you be able to sit down and look at your life. What am I doing that offend the cross? Because if you are living a life that brings shame to God, if you are living a sinful life, you are living a carnal life, that means you are putting Jesus into crucifixion again. You are killing him afresh. The first death is not having an impact in your life. And listen, Jesus won't go to the cross again. Jesus won't go to the cross again. If you followed my life message yesterday evening, he said it is finished. Meaning, this is final. I pray that you open your heart. Let Jesus come in. You may have been going to church. We have a lot of church goers. For years going to church and yet not coming to the realization of salvation of Jesus Christ. Made, made available through the cross. I pray for you today. That the death of Christ will not be in vain in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So this man called Simon the Serene was made. To help Jesus carry the cross. There are some of you as you listen to me. The keys to certain things that you want to do is in someone's hand. And the person is not willing to apply it for you. Yes, the assistance you need. Someone that can give it to you. is not willing. If you can join your faith with mine. If you listen to this word and you comply. I decree that the power of com that, that can compel men. To obey God, even against their, des their desire, will work in your favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Another man we quickly look at is Joseph of Arimathea. We never knew about this man. We never read anything about this man until Jesus died. Of course, it's, you know, it's good for you to have this uh, understanding because the kind, of the, the kind of death Jesus died wasn't the type of death that the body would be handed over back to the family. No. A, a criminal who was, you know, executed is government property. Yes, exactly. In most cases, they buried them in man's grave. If they are more than one or two, they buried them in man's grave. No honorable burial ceremony for such people. And Jesus died like a criminal because of you and me. When I consider it as I meditate in this Easter period, I again, I said, Lord, I dedicate my life to you. I looked at everything. Where is that sin that I, would, I should repent from immediately? Because when I looked with my heart, and I looked through scriptures, what Jesus went through, I, I knew that I need to be closer to him again. And that's the same, the same invitation I'm giving to you. Don't say I'm this. No, come closer to him. Don't lie unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. What are we saying? Joseph of Arimathea, 
offered to do something that lifted, that singled Jesus out of the, 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 the dead bodies of criminals. Because Jesus wasn't a criminal. Just like the thief by the right hand side said, he said, we have been executed for our crimes. He said, but this man has done nothing. The thief knew he has done nothing. Pilate said, if you are choosing Barabbas, then what do you expect me to do with the just man? They said, crucify him. He said, no. They said, crucify him. Then he said, give me a bowl of water. He washed his hand before the crowd. He said, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. So everyone knew that Jesus was innocent. That everything he went through was as a result of, you know, uh, to fulfill prophecy. In Matthew 27, verse 50, 57, Let's see what Joseph of Arimathea did. When the evening was come, there came a rich man. He was a rich man. A rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He was a secret disciple. Yes. I, I, when I see some people who allow their word to get into their head and they feel too big to serve God, they feel too big to identify with Jesus, I look at them and say, this is ignorant. This man was a rich man. In his days, if they describe a man as a rich man, that man can as well be called a billionaire of our days. And he was not ashamed to identify with Jesus. We have people in church, some churches where you see because he's a rich man, he, he, he can't sweep the floor. He can't do anything. He's a big man. You can't be bigger than Jesus. You can't be bigger than God. This time, Jesus' lifeless body was there. Like the lifeless body of a criminal. Yet this rich man could identify with Jesus. And what did he do? In verse 58, he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. You see, where is used in the Bible are used, you know, specifically. They are used consciously. They are used carefully. He begged because the dead body of Jesus wasn't meant for any honorable burial. The man pleaded. And Pilate, because of the status of the man, Pilate released it to him. It's good to be a great man. It's good to be a great man. If a poor man had gone there to ask for the body of Jesus, they say, in prison, that guy. They say, that guy, come on. You mean, okay, you are a criminal too. But because of his status, because of his financial balance, and everybody know him, he came, he asked for it, and he was given to him. The dead body of Christ was given to him. And what did he do? Look at verse 60, verse 59. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. He treated, treated the body of Jesus with respect. Madam, if you have decided to do anything for God, do it well. Yes. Sir, if you have chosen to do anything for the kingdom, do it well. It is after he's dead, after he's dead like a criminal, I better use any cloth. No! No, the Bible says he wrapped the body in a clean linen cloth. Let's do a research on linen cloth in the Bible. Linen cloth was used for important persons. When somebody wants to dress God just they will wear linen cloth. Those, those are the kind of clothes he used. He treated the body of Jesus with respect. Whatever you do, do it with respect. Do it with respect. Because that's when it will attract the necessary reward. And then, what did he do after that? In verse 60, and he laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. He was a part of the funeral team, of those that buried the body. He was there in his own grave, the grave he prepared for himself. And you know that man never used that grave again, even though it became empty three this time. He never used it again. After Jesus ascended, till tomorrow people visit Israel to see. People go to the place to is 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 a tourist uh, site. The man never used it, but the man died. He was buried somewhere, and I know he's going to be buried in a better place too. But that place he gave to Jesus, he never took it back. Amen. Amen. Now, what are we saying? At that point, Jesus, the, the body of Jesus needed help. He was dead. Prophecy already said it, I was better with the rich. Now, who is going to do this? Thank God, Joseph of Arimathea came of his own volition. He made up his mind. There are some helpers that do their, that they render help willingly. 
Like I said, under Simon the Serene, some empires are forced to do whatever they do. They are compelled. Some do it willingly. Like Joseph from Alpharimathea. He offered to help willingly. He pleaded for the body, got the body, treated the body, were buried the body. My friend, your helpers will locate you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if you look through the Bible, David was helped. Every man in the Bible, all the people, the, the, the great, you know, patriarchs, we read about in the Bible, they, at one point or the other, they were helped. You remember when Saul was going to hack Joseph, I mean David to death, it was Micah. It was Mika that helped. Because she got to know her father's plan. Ah, and she revealed it to her husband David. And then they prepared the bed as if someone was lying in there. And they hacked okay. ordinary folk. If not for that first act of benevolence, David would have died. But I want to quickly say this. You are living your life. You are an emblem of prophecy. There are certain things God has said concerning you and it must come to pass in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are not just a prophecy. Your life is not just by accident. Right in your mother's womb, you started winning the battle. From your mother's womb, the day you were born, even when your eyes were shut, they were shouting, see what, see what, but you didn't know what was happening. At that point, you have started winning victory. Winning the battle and getting victory. Because people came to greet you as... I said, day hot baby, that didn't like you. There were people who visited you and your mommy in the hospital, even when you were just like, you know, a lifeless person. A baby, less than a day, two days. There were even situations where they handed you over to your enemy. And your enemy carried you, but couldn't kill you. At all. Is God not good? God is, good. God is a good God. Amen. So today, I, I inform you again that you are acting out prophecy in your life. And my prayer for you, the ultimate that God has destined for you shall come to pass. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Only God can help you. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 27, the Bible says, And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, hence shall I help thee. That was a king. When there was famine in Israel, it... it became so worse that women were eating their children. And as the king was passing, a woman shouted. One of the women that ate their children. He said, oh, king, help me. And the king looked at her and said, if God has refused to help you, who is me to help you? That's a king talking. So every help you've received is from God. Because if God does not help, no man will help. I want to pray this prayer for you. And as I declare, I want you to know that it's for your good. Your helpers will locate you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive forgiveness from helpers Amen. that you have offended. Amen. Because some persons have offended their helpers. And because of that, their helpers are now dragging their helpers are not coming forth with what they're supposed to do. Receive grace for forgiveness. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive grace to do that thing that will spur your helpers into action. Amen. There are little, little things out there sometimes that you do that wakes up your helper. And until you do those things, your helper continues to go into slumber. And I pray, receive grace to do those things. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The fourth declaration that you should receive grace for a positive change in that character that scares helpers away from you. Sometimes helpers come around, they see nasty character, they see character that shouldn't be with God's children. And then they move backwards. Such character, I pray for you right now, receive grace for a change. Amen. A positive change in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is where we live in this land of living. Amen. Yes, today, Easter Saturday, your testimony is sure. Amen. And I pray for you right now, wherever you are, whichever country you are watching from, the hand of the Lord reach you. Amen. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. for you that is sick, I say be healed. Amen. For you that is going through tribulations in your marriage, I say receive peace. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I address you again, you coronavirus, go back to wherever you come from. Amen. Go back to wherever you come from. Amen. We take authority over you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We declare that this child of God stays in Goshen. Amen. In Goshen, plagues have no authority. Amen. In Goshen, the angel of death cannot operate. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are lifted above the spirit of death. Amen. And when the angel of death see the blood, 
you will pass over. Amen. And this is the season that the blood of Jesus was shed. Yes. You are covered with the blood. Yes. You are sealed with the blood. Amen. You are protected with the blood. Yes. Wherever you are, receive your testimony. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So good to know you were there. God bless you. I want you to make a comment. Please leave a message behind. And I have shared this with you. I've always told you, become an, uh, an extension of the mouth peace that preached the message. When you share this message, not that platform, street platform you belong to, you have become the preacher indirectly. The Lord bless you Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen.